Hello lovelies, in this video we're going to be looking at one really hard exam question on evolution and speciation. This is part of a whole series of videos that are available exclusively to members of my YouTube channel. Hi everyone, okay so we're looking at an evolution speciation question today and these often take the same form so they look the same um, and the answers are almost pretty much identical. So the Hawaiian Islands have the most diverse collection of Drosophilid flies in the world, with approximately 800 different species having been identified. All of the species have been tracked back to a single common ancestor from mainland USA that colonised the islands millions of years ago. It's hypothesised that this could have been a single fertilised female blown across in a storm or trapped in a piece of fruit stuck to a bird. A lot of that last part was extra information that we might not actually need for the question, but it could be helpful. We read it anyway. It's not one of those things where it's a question where we've, we've never talked about or probably never heard of these flies before. And it's just going to be us applying our knowledge of evolution and speciation to this example. So our first question is actually quite simple. What is a gene pool? So already I know Bit from the question we're looking at probably evolution because it's a common ancestor a single common ancestor and suddenly we've got 800 species and given that we've got islands and a mainland we're talking about speciation but first we're just thinking back to just a definition straight up what is a gene pool so just to get our head around the kind of content we need for this a population remember is a group of organisms of the same species in a specific area or habitat at a set time that can breed and interbreed with each other. The total number of alleles that's present out of all the individuals in that population, so remember an allele would be a version of a gene, so the total number of alleles present in that population is the gene pool. So the pool of genes from which every time there's breeding going on, there's a pool of genes that can be passed on to the offspring. That's what that kind of means. We're going to come across another term or need another term later on, which is the allelic or the allele frequency. That's not to do with the number. That's to do with the proportion of each allele in that gene pool. That's the frequency. So the number of alleles in a population is the gene pool. The proportion or how common or how many of those um, alleles are a certain type is the allele frequency. OK, so our definition here is just the total number of alleles in a population. Now, you have to say alleles and you have to say population to get the mark. There are two words here. You can't get away with saying anything else really other than the total number or all or the entire number of alleles in a population. So now we've got B, which is what we were kind of expecting. Explain how the Hawaiian species of flies could have evolved from the mainland ancestor from USA. So we need to think about the fact we've got islands, we've got a mainland, we've got one single common ancestor that came over to these islands millions of years ago, and now we have 800 different species across the islands. So we are explaining how these specific flies evolved from one common ancestor on islands. So that type of speciation is clearly going to be allopatric speciation because we have a geographical element. We have something that is separating these populations of flies that are then evolving into different species. So with these questions, once you've established what the type of speciation is, it's just about quickly bullet pointing or quickly reminding yourself the steps of speciation on that type. So for allopatric, we have geographic isolation. So we are separated in actual space, separated by a river, separated by not being able to get near each other because that isolation, that separation, means that we can't breed with each other anymore. So one big population has been split and those little populations can no longer breed, interbreed with each other. There's no gene flow between populations because of this geographical separation. Naturally, in all of our new little populations, we have variation because of mutation, which we always need to mention if in any type of selection, natural selection or evolution question. Because they're separated on different islands, in different habitats, they're gonna have different selection pressures. Or if you want to say it another way, different biotic and abiotic factors. So they're gonna experience different predators, um, they're gonna have different food, 
they're going to potentially suffer different temperatures, there's going to be different water availability levels, all of that stuff, because they're physically in a different space that could have different factors affecting where they are. And because of that, natural selection occurs in those environments, and some of these flies will be able to survive and therefore reproduce in these specific environments and some won't. So we have selection going on, we have natural selection happening where different individuals in the different islands survive and reproduce. And because they're reproducing and they're passing all their alleles to the next generation, to their offspring, over time we get a change in the allele frequency. So we get a change in which alleles are in greater proportion in the gene pool. And eventually that change is so big that we get separate species, which means that they cannot interbreed with each other anymore because they're so separate. Now we need to go ahead and write that out in sentences. You can use a bullet point style to kind of answer these types of questions, but I would recommend trying to write it in sentences so that you're applying it to the situation that we are talking about with the islands and the flies. It could be lizards and islands, it could be any, uh, it could be fish in lakes and little isolated ponds. It could be all sorts. So try and take these kind of notes that you make for yourself on the side for a, a long answer question and then just turn that into sentences following the sequence that we've done. The flies were geographically isolated on the different islands so they could no longer interbreed. Then in each new population, there's variation, which is due to mutation. In each new island, there's different selection pressures, and so natural selection occurs, and some individuals survive and pass on alleles to their offspring, or survive and reproduce is fine. Over time, this leads to a change in the allele frequency of each population until the gene pools are separate and they can no longer interbreed. So we get to a point where we're saying we understand that they are different species now. That is more than enough for six marks. I on the right hand side in the purple those points are points that you get marks for so we've we've definitely said enough here for six that is how i would answer every single question that's like this where it's asking you to say oh there was this one species or these two species then suddenly now there's loads of other species in somewhere new or because the environment changed or they were separated this is how to answer this question Okay, so now we've got a different part of the question, which we don't, it's still related to the flies, but we don't need that first part, which was mostly there to help us with that long answer question. Drosophila are one group of insects which contain polyteen chromosomes. These are extra large chromosomes found in the nuclei of salivary gland cells. It can be removed and stained so that their banding patterns can be viewed under a light microscope. Explain how scientists could have used the banding pattern on the chromosomes to establish the evolutionary relationships between the flies. This is a chromosome question, but really it's an evolutionary relationships question dressed up in a different wording. So evolutionary relationships is about determining how closely related organisms are to each other. Now, here's an example of a chromosome and their banding patterns. You'll have seen loads of pictures like this before. So the bands, remember, often we use to talk about them to show loci of genes. So the location or the literally specifically where on the chromosome each gene is located. And so this is an example of chromosome 7 from a human, and this is an example of pointing out the band that shows the gene that, if mutated, causes cystic fibrosis. So we need to think about the fact that we only need to take two marks. We're not going to have to say a lot. We're going to have to compare the chromosomes between the flies in order to find out how closely related they are. That's basically what we're saying but they've specifically talked about the banding pattern. So what can the banding pattern show us and how could the scientists use that to determine how closely related they are? This is a fancy way of talking about comparing DNA, comparing base sequences, or like comparing the amino acid questions if you get asked about comparing amino acid sequences to look for evolutionary relationships, it's the same thing. So we know that we're looking for similarities and differences between the bands which represent genes, which could mean the length of the base sequence or just where the genes are on the chromosome, if they're there or not there. So that's what we're looking at. So we need to say that we're looking at that banding pattern and then say why. So why or how could that show us evolutionary relationships? And evolutionary relationships are always about describing how closely related species are by looking at the differences between their DNA 
their RNA, their amino acid sequence. So the, the fewer differences or the more similar the DNA or the amino acid sequence is, the closer related they are. The more differences there are, further back in time are they related to each other as a, with a shared common ancestor. So that's all we really need to give an example of here is say what, you know, what the scientists are actually going to do with the chromosomes and the pattern. They're going to compare them. And then what will comparing them show or tell the scientists that could help them to determine how these species of flies are related to each other. So my first mark is fairly easy. I'm just going to say the scientists could compare the banding pattern between the chromosomes from different species. So remember, we're not identifying species here. That's not what it's asking us. It's asking us how we determine the evolutionary relationships between the fly species. So they're going to compare the chromosomes, the banding pattern on the chromosomes between the different species. And then there's two options here really for saying how, how that shows evolutionary relationships, either the closely related way or the further related way. So the more similar the pattern, the more closely related the species are. So they share a more recent common ancestor or the flip side of it. Or to be saying the greater number of differences in the pattern, the less related they are because it suggests they diverge from a common ancestor longer ago or further back in time, or they have a less recent common, uh, shared common ancestor. You could say both of these, really. You could say the more similar the pattern, the more closely related they are, the greater number of differences, the less closely related they are. You can say both, and that just kind of hammers home your point, which is absolutely fine, um, but it is only two marks. So I think as long as you've said the first point and then one of the second two points, that should be absolutely fine. Again, this is the response I would go for if you are being asked about anything. So how could they compare DNA? How could they compare mitochondrial DNA? How could they compare or how could they use amino acid sequences taken from different species? How could they use RNA taken from different species? So all of this is the same kind of answer to this question. It's about looking for differences and about the number of similarities or differences between them and how that tells you how close they are in evolutionary time. Okay, then lastly, we've got about a question that says about 100 of species of the Hawaiian Drosophila have large, highly patterned wings, and they are known as the picture wing Drosophila. In some species, like D. transipenna, the males have more detailed patterning on their wings than the females. Immediately, we're talking males and females, we're talking um, physical features, I'm thinking it must be to do with sexual selection, mate selection identification. So it's saying, suggest how the variety of wing patterns displayed by these flies helps to maintain them as separate species. So it's a suggest question. So these are often put in there, remember, they're not something you're expected to know. You won't necessarily have been taught this specific thing. You're using common sense or knowledge gained from the question to kind of suggest an answer that you think is correct. So we've got lots of different wing patterns in this group of 100 species. And it's asking you, how does it help to maintain them as separate species? So we know just be separate species. They, they can't be interbreeding with each other. It's basically saying, how does these wing patterns or having different or specific wing patterns help to stop interbreeding? So often um, questions about the colour or what species look like or specific patterns that they have is to do with mate identification. So mate identification is really important because it ensures successful reproduction. So often these questions are framed like that, like how does it help to make sure that reproduction is successful or how does it ensure reproduction is successful? Because it means that if they can recognise each other as the same species, they're going to be able to breed together to produce fertile offspring. They're not going to end up producing, being able potentially to reproduce, but producing infertile offspring that then aren't going to pass their um, genes on to their next generation. Mate identification or anything that is courtship behaviour or anything like that is an identifying feature that helps members of the opposite sex of the same species recognise and identify each other as the same species. And it prevents interbreeding or mixing of genes with, with other closely related species. So that's basically what we're going to say for two marks. We're going to say what in this case, the example is the wing pattern. So what does the wing pattern allow it to do? How does that keep them from being separate species? Mate selection is based on wing pattern or wing pattern helps mates to identify each other as members of the same species. 
and this keeps our gene pools separate or this prevents interbreeding between i would add maybe on the end there between different species but the idea of keeping the gene pool separate tells you that you're separating your your genes from your individual populations that's that question done so remember a lot of this is applicable to a load of different types of questions that look like this if you're being asked about how to um, describe how evolution and speciation has happened similar way of answering the question and they'll word it in a similar way if you're asked about thinking about how to compare or identify evolutionary relationships that's also a similar question that could come up a lot and then this equally about something to do with mate interaction or courtship behavior that's what they're asking you here as well okay hope that was helpful ouch This is why in some videos I have unexplained scratches.